Elijah. Elijah and the, and, and the whirlwind. This is the last Elijah story. Now we start a series of stories about Elisha. Elijah served as a prophet, best we can figure, for about 25 years. It was through the entire reign of Ahab and, and Ahaziah. Um, I find it interesting. This story brings up an issue that uh, some people have noticed and I think is interesting. And that was the similarities between Elijah and Moses. Both men had a unique and close relationship with God unlike anybody else. There was this intimate relationship between Elijah and God and, uh, uh, and Moses and God. Also, both men had to deal with depression. God accepted it, didn't chide him on it, just, just you know, but both men, it's recorded how they were depressed. We also have uh, both men were called to Mount Sinai. God calls both men to Mount Horeb just to talk. <laughs> Had to go across uh, desert and everything to get there. These two men, these are the only two men that were called there to have a private conference with God. Also, these two men are the ones that met with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter, James, and John saw Jesus talking with Moses and Elijah. Now, why does this story bring all that to mind? Well, this little walk that the two prophets had, they left Gilgal, which was right next to Jericho. And that is, seven, that is 1,200 feet below sea level. They climb up the sea level, go about 1,200 feet above sea level to Bethel. Now, on easy walking, that'd be about a four-hour walk, but they're climbing the entire way. Don't know quite how, how, how long it took. And there, they're now at the top of this valley, and there's a mountain on this side as well. So they're at the top of the mountain, and they go back down, all the way down to Jericho. At that point, they go, a, which is about a four-hour walk, and then they go across the river, across the Jordan. Now they're at the base of Mount Nebo. It's interesting. Elijah knew that his time was up, that he was going home. And in a sense, you could say from Bethel, he's moving towards Mount Nebo where Moses died. He didn't make it. Really don't know if that's where he was going. But I think it's interesting. And it brings up Moses when you think about the fact that he was moving in the direction of Mount Nebo. Now, a lot of people have uh, thoughts and uh, concerns about um, Elisha asking for the double portion. Some people have said, well, this is him asking that he'll do, uh, he'll be twice as great as Elijah. And they point out, with a little bit of stretching, that uh, Elisha did twice as many miracles. No, that's not what this means at all. The double portion was the right of the firstborn. He wanted twice of what all the other prophets got, or in the, in the case of a, of a child, twice of what all the other sons got. Uh, he, it was also the position of leadership. Elisha was simply asking, I want to be the leader after you go. No way was he asking to be twice as great or do twice as many miracles. And now, Elijah was shocked at this. He, that wasn't his position to give that out. That was only God's uh, decision. And then he had an idea, which I think he got from, 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 from the Lord. As a sign that Elisha would have it, Elijah said, if you see me go up, then it's yours. And I'm sure that Elijah probably watched and saw that, sure enough, 
he saw him go up. And for the prophet, that was good enough. But it wasn't good enough for Elisha. He picked up the cloak, he picked up the mantle, and he walked back to the water, and he raised it up and said, where's the Lord God of Elijah? And he hit the water, and the waters parted. That was his sign. Sign for him and the other prophets that, that were watching. When they saw that water part, that was good enough for them. But it wasn't necessarily good enough for the people of Israel. He got back to Jericho. They had a problem with their spring of water. And he heals the spring of water by pouring in the salt. And I think that was good enough for the people of Israel. This is the man who is replacing Elijah. But it wasn't good enough for the enemies of Israel. You see, Elijah, his entire life, his main goal was to destroy the worship of Baal in Israel. He thought maybe he had done that on Mount Carmel, but no, he had killed the prophets, but people still worship Baal. That's why he thought he was such a failure. These 42 young men, now young men back in those days, that particular word meant anyone that was under 30 years old. So you, you kind of think of these as young men in their 20s. They were not children. They, uh, from best we can figure, they were worshipers of Baal. And they were basically saying, no, 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 get out of here. We don't accept you. You are not Elijah. We know him. He was a hairy man, wore, uh, wore uh, uh, coarse clothes, uh, uh, goat hair, and, and, and uh, uh, was, was out in the wilderness. Uh, Elisha was bald, uh, smooth skin except for his beard, and, and uh, uh, dressed in normal clothes, lived in houses, was among the people. No, you're not, you know, you're not Elijah. Well, they got, the, uh, the worshipers of Baal got their sign right enough. The bears came out and killed those 42 young men. And that was a foreshadowing. Because what Elijah started, Elisha would end. He anointed Jehu. Jehu killed all of the worshipers of Baal. So the 42 men, the 42 young men foreshadowed what was going to happen to all the other worshipers of Baal. So you have four signs that Elisha took over. The sign given to Elijah, just see me go up. The sign given to the prophets in Elisha, the parting of the water. The sign to Israel, the healing of the, of the, uh, the spring. And the signs to the worshipers of Baal, the bears that came out and killed the 42 men. As you compare these two men, Elijah and, and Elisha, they are so different. As I mentioned, one was rugged and hairy, and the other one was, was uh, smooth and uh, bald and wore regular, just wore regular street clothes and uh, lived in houses and uh, actually was familiar with the king and the army and was someone who uh, fit into the crowd a little bit more. Elijah never fit in the crowd. We're going to see in a future story that uh, they had to ask, is there a prophet among us? And someone, oh yeah, yeah, Elijah's right over there. Well, if that's Elijah, they would not have to even ask the question if he was around. But we see the miracles. Uh, Elijah's miracles were grand and public, calling fire out of heaven. Where Elisha's, oh, in Elijah, he only did two miracles that were uh, helpful and helped someone's problem. Elisha, eight of his miracles were individual and helpful to somebody. When you think of John the Baptist, you think of Elijah rough and hairy and rugged, living out in the, in the wilderness. Jesus was more like Elisha. He wore common clothes, dressed like a rabbi, but was common uh, among the, the way he, that, that he dressed. He, he walked among people. His miracles were helpful in healing people and, and meeting the needs of those that were that were distressed.
obviously he was the son of God and not like Elisha in that, but in the way he approached things, he was more like the prophet Elisha. Well, these two men, both great prophets of God, both used in a mighty way. Well, come back next week when we continue on with the story insights on the story of the week. We'll see you next week.